The term history repeats itself should help people make better informed decisions, especially when the awful result can be seen coming a mile away. But if people ever learn from their mistakes, this channel wouldn't be quite so much fun. Toxic waste is nothing to mess around and find out with, but sometimes humanity just can't help itself. Let's talk about what happened, and continues to happen, to the City View Center in Ohio. In the 1970s, Garfield Heights, Ohio, was experiencing some strange health problems. Seemingly out of nowhere, people were getting sick. In one case, resident Sandy Funk, at age 37, started to experience blackouts, and after consulting a doctor, discovered she had developed brain tumors. Now this was tragic, but no one raised any eyebrows until other residents in the same neighborhood started to have the same symptoms all resulting in tumors, lymphoma, and cancers of all kinds. A rather alarming development that only took a few years of confusion to figure out. See, in the 70s, the city dump was becoming filled to capacity. In need for a new location for the incoming garbage, officials settled on a hill that overlooked Cuyahoga Heights, Brooklyn Heights, Seven Hills, Independence, and Valley View a rather pretty location that could see over the whole city, but perhaps not a great location for a dump. Maybe you can see where this is going, but as rainfall gathered in the dump, it would begin to run downhill into the neighborhoods. Sludge, oil, and garbage began to contaminate the water and left a rather unpleasant smell lingering around the homes. Not only that, but when the EPA was finally called in to investigate if the dump was causing all this illness, they discovered that toxic waste barrels had been dumped onto the land. The dump was shut down in 1979, but it didn't mean the police or the EPA really cared about the contamination. For years, the toxic waste continued to seep downhill into the neighborhoods, even as residents complained of health complications and the smell. It wasn't their problem, even when complaints of methane gases inside the homes came in, and drilling at the dump found cancer-causing vinyl chloride in the ground. All of these known problems were still insanely not considered an emergency situation. Now there was a closed dump sitting on top of a hill with a nice view of the city. Why let it sit there when someone could make money off of it? In 2001, an office park was proposed for the location, and the EPA said that sounds like a great idea. Get rid of the toxic chemicals and garbage first? Nah. We'll build that sucker right on top of it. No effort needed. In fact, we're killing two birds with one stone. You slap a parking lot on top of the toxic dump, and that puppy will be all right. No more complaints from the people we're killing, right? No. Residents continued to scream at a brick wall that this was an awful idea, while construction workers were either not told at all or just undersold how dangerous this site was. Construction would continue as planned, but four years after it began, it didn't end up becoming an office park. No, we needed to attract more people to this bad idea. Instead, the buildings were fitted to become a shopping center, and in 2006, City View Center was born. Big box stores of the mall consisted of Walmart, Giant Eagle, Circuit City, PetSmart, Joanne Fabrics, Dick's Sporting Goods, Bed Bath & Beyond, AJ Wright, and Office Max. Once these were in place, the outer, smaller stores appeared, consisting of Radio Shack, Applebee's, Steak & Shake, Ruby Tuesday, and First Merit. That's quite a lot of stores that never batted an eye at moving into the location, which leads me to believe that no one told any of them about the toxic dump that lay beneath. This is supported by the fact that Home Depot was originally scheduled to be at City View, but after conducting their own research on the location, they backed out because it looked like a terrible idea. Other stores would soon find out what they were running from. The shopping center was opened and operational for just a couple of years before things started to quite literally collapse. 
One of their biggest businesses, Walmart, was forced to evacuate the store and close in 2008 when explosive methane gas was detected for the second time within the store. Even before they were forced to close, they were experiencing safety issues with the structure of the building. Since the whole shopping center was just a slab of concrete built on top of a landfill, there were some serious issues with the ground moving. Today, when you look at the site, you can see some of the marks from the original tar levels way above where it sits now. And huge gaps were formed between the buildings and the road. Some of the stores tried to install vents and pipes to guide the, frankly, toxic fumes out of the buildings, but ultimately, it was a losing battle, and a bad idea to begin with. Following Walmart, other stores began to close, leaving only Giant Eagle and Applebee's by 2013. Still not learning from their mistakes and downright determined to make use of this tainted land, plans were made to turn the Walmart shell into a convenience center. Fortunately, that was cancelled. I don't think there's a con in the world that would get me to hang out there all weekend. Still, still not learning, more plans were made in 2020 to turn the site into a business park yet again. I see we've gone full circle. As of 2013, the site is abysmal, which is a shame because it really is a pretty view. Thanks to the contamination due to the 70s, who knows if it's ever going to be suitable to be built upon. I'm guessing unless they gut the whole place and create a more stable ground, the answer is no. But hey, let's keep trying again and again anyways. Thanks for watching. For more true crime and horror, please consider subscribing. Game with me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, and as always, be well. <laughs>